Bienvenido a Barcelona. We're not here today to watch any football, unfortunately, but I'm here today to actually show you the brand new Mini Cooper Electric. In this video, we're gonna talk about the design of the car, cargo space, interior space, and of course, we're gonna go for a ride because there's some amazing roads here in Spain, and we're gonna talk about the performance of this Mini Cooper S. First off, styling. Since its rebirth in 2001, the Mini design has carefully evolved. And of course, that's the case with the latest generation J01 and also the F66 Cooper gasoline variant. And that starts at the front because you see right here, brand new headlights, circular of course, with this nice ring around the two LED lines they run inside. The reason for this design is because you can actually customize some of the light sequence in the car, in the front and in the back as well. Also the hexagonal grille, it's gone. And now you're getting this octagonal shape grille, very simplistic in design, less parts on it. And of course, with the integration of a radar, because this car comes with some advanced driver assistance features. More on that as I drive the car. One thing that's gone on the car, compared to the F66, of course, and the previous generation F56 Cooper SE, it's the clamshell bonnet. As you can see right here, you're getting this shot line and a completely different bonnet. Another thing that's gone on the car, unfortunately, it's the scoop right here, the hood vent, it's gone, which was a nice addition to the car because it gave it a more of a sporty, more aggressive look at the front. Now, if you were to compare side by side the F66 with the J01, you will see a major change at the front and that's the angle of this windshield. Because this car, it's all about aerodynamics and efficiency. Mini decided to give you more of a steep angle on this windshield. From what I was told, it also helps with the safety crash regulations. So if you look at the car side by side, that's one thing that will immediately stand out. The streamlined design of the new Mini Cooper Electric can also be seen from the side. And if you start at the front, you will notice there are no more black wheel arches. You're getting the same paint color right there as you would see on other models as well. Mini likes to mention this charismatic simplicity approach, their design, and you will see that also from the side because, as I said, very simplistic, very minimalistic shapes with only two lines running across. You have this shoulder line, which will break down visually the height of the car, and then you have this indentation, this crease on the bottom, which of course gives the car a sportier look. Even the bottom piece right here, it's not as pronounced as on the Aceman, for example. And of course, because this is a smaller car, it goes really well with the overall side view of the car. Another thing you'll notice on the side are those flush door handles. Once again, it goes with the idea of efficiency and aerodynamics. And the car has a coefficient drag of 0.26 compared to 0.34 on the previous Mini Cooper SE. Now let's talk about the dimension of the car in the context of the F56, the previous generation. This particular J01 model, it's about eight millimeters longer, 30 millimeters wider in the back and about 30 millimeters taller as well. Now, if you were to compare this one with the F66 Cooper S, this one is only two millimeters shorter, but it's actually wider in the rear by 12 millimeters. And of course, it's nice to see the Mini manage to keep the compact proportions of the Cooper, because of course, if you want to move up and have more space inside and cargo space, you will be able to opt for an Aceman or a Countryman, for example. The one thing you'll notice on the J01 are those fenders. You can see the hips, they stick out quite a bit and give this car a very mean and very aggressive look on the road. Next, what you'll notice are the brand new taillights. They're digital in many ways because from the inside of the car, you can actually customize the light sequence, as I mentioned at the front as well. But of course, it still retains that Union Jack digital interpretation if you want to. The one thing you might have noticed on the car is the fact that there are not that many chrome elements and you can see this very clean design in the back as well. Even the integration of the Cooper S logo, it's all embedded with this plastic line right here. And of course you have the S in yellow green to reflect the electromobility of the car. 
And of course, you see the very clean bumper design, of course, to go with the overall simplistic look of the car. And lastly, if you were to look once again at the F66 Cooper and the J01, you'll notice that the rear end of this car, it's a little bit more upright. Now let's talk about the cargo space of the Mini Cooper. Of course, there isn't that much space because it's still a Mini Cooper. So what you're getting essentially, it's 210 liters with the seats up, but if you put the seats down, it can expand up to 800 liters. You might be wondering how does it compare to the previous F56 Cooper SE? Well, you're only really losing about one liter. Mini takes a lot of pride in maximizing the space of the new Cooper. And you can see right here, you have a hidden compartment where you can store some things, but not much. Of course, you have the charging cable right there. It may be underneath a little bit more space, but overall, that's about it. So of course, like I said, if you want to get more space, all you have to do is just pull these handles down and you get additional cargo space up to 800 liters. Of course, passenger space, it's equally important in this Cooper. So I'm going to hop in the back seat. I'm 6'2", 1.9 meters tall. So we'll see if I have enough headroom, elbow room and leg room as well. So let's go take a look. All right. Managed to get in. That's always a plus. So seat moves back. Yes, I am a little bit squeezed in. As you can see, my knees are touching the front seat. Uh, there is a scoop in the back seat right here, which helps a little bit, but not too much. Of course, you can probably do this and get a little bit more space. But overall, if you're on the tall side of things, both the driver and you, you might have a hard time in here. Luckily, there is plenty of headroom here. So I have about four or five centimeters, two or three inches. So that's nice. Plenty of elbow room space right there. And of course, this is a two-seater in the back. So you only have two seat belts. So you're not gonna be able to ride with anybody in the middle seat. Overall, I would say if you plan on using this car for a road trip with some tall people, that might not be ideal. Even though Mini managed to actually make it a little bit more spacious in the back, according to them, than on the F66. And how did they do that? Well, they told me because of the electric drivetrain and the platform in this car, they managed to push a little bit the passenger cabin towards the front and that gave them a couple of inches, maybe two centimeters of space in the back. I'm not sure if that's noticeable, but that's what they told me earlier today. Now let's hop into the front seat and talk more about the design of the car. All right, so let's talk about the interior design of the Mini Cooper Electric. That starts with the fact that there is no more cluster instrument right behind the steering wheel. Everything has moved into this round 9.4 inches OLED screen, which is absolutely beautiful. The only downside is that in order to see most of the information about the road, the speed and all of that, you have to look on the right side. Of course, if you have the head-up display option in the car, then that's going to help quite a bit. What I like also in this car is the fact that Mini managed to combine the digital with the analog world. Even though there are less physical switches right here, there is still plenty that gives you that tactile feedback that we still enjoy in our cars. And that starts with those switches for the power. That's how you turn on the car. And this is how you change the experiences in the car as you drive. And we're going to talk about that when I drive the car. Now, if you look at this center area, there is plenty of storage space. Of course, you have this wireless charger right there. There are also two USB-Cs if you want to plug in some devices. It is really nicely done because it's giving you a lot of space in the center console right here. And as you can see, it extends all the way in the back so you can store quite a few things. That's extremely useful because if you look on the side, there isn't much room in those pockets right there. So you're most likely to be storing a lot of things in the center. The armrest, it's also different than on the F66. And that has to do with the fact that the seats are a little bit bigger than on that car. So for that reason, this armrest looks different and it's a little bit smaller than on that car. It's still fairly okay if you want to rest your elbow on that. Now let's talk about the seats and the materials because there is no more leather inside the new Mini Cooper regardless of the drivetrain. You have this fake leather with this fabric combination. Of course you can spec this in many many different ways and if you go to the Mini configurator you will actually see that. A lot of people complain about the interior of the car being a little bit cheaper and they might have a point because there is a lot of plastic in here 
but in order to keep the cost down and still offer a fairly affordable Mini Cooper, electric or the regular one, Mini decided to go with this fabric on the dashboard. Of course, it's also recyclable, so that goes with the whole Mini philosophy that they want to be more conscious about the environment and about their cars as well. You will notice this strap right there. There is another strap on the steering wheel. And of course, the idea of this strap is really to customize it to your likings. And you can see right here, you have different stitching and you also have a different color on the steering wheel as well. Another change compared to the F66, it's the fact that the Harman Kardon speaker is placed on the door compared to the A pillar on that car. And also the door handle looks completely different and sits a little bit lower than on the F66. So as much as I love to bore you with all these details and exterior and materials and all of that, you're probably here to learn more about the driving experience. So with that being said, let's go see if this car still feels like a Mini, still drives like a Mini, and if the go car feeling, it's still there. All right, so here we go. Let's see what this Mini can do. And he can do a lot already. I mean, look at this car, just so much fun. Oh, brakes are great. All right, so we're off to a good start here. Some really fun roads here in Spain. And of course, we'll have a chance to push this 218 horsepower, 390 newton meters of torque J01 Cooper S. So this is the top of the line Cooper Electric. There is another variant, the Cooper E, which makes only about 184 horsepower. With this top variant, you're also getting a zero to 60 miles per hour time of 6.7 seconds compared to 7.3 seconds of the entry level Cooper Electric. This variant has a battery pack of around 54 kilowatts hours, and that's enough to give it a range of 250 miles, which translates into around 402 kilometers on the WLTP standard. Another important factor in an electric car is the charging speed. This car has a 95 kilowatts capability on the DC fast charging, enough to charge the car from 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes. 95, of course, it's not ideal today, especially when you look at other electric products that have a higher charging rate. Even on the BMW side, you will see cars that can charge up to 200 kilowatts. Now, if you opt for the Cooper Electric, you're getting even less charging capability, only of 75 kilowatts. So that's one area that I believe Mini could have improved when it comes to the Mini Cooper Electric. Now let's talk about the size, because of course the larger battery pack in this car compared to the outgoing SE F56 model, it adds a little bit more weight. So this car weighs around 1600 kilograms compared to 1440 kilograms that you will find in the F56 Cooper SE. And naturally that will have a little bit of an impact maybe on the driving experience. So we're about to find out. Of course, you might be hearing the sound in the car and that's an exciting part of this car because it comes with four distinct driving sounds. Right now, I'm in the timeless mode and this is the mode that is trying to replicate the sound from the Mini Morris in the 1960s, but of course with a digital touch on it. So I've learned earlier today that the composer Renzo Vitale recorded the sound of the Mini Morris and then digitalized that sound to reflect the new Mini Cooper. And it sounds a little bit different as you accelerate. So it actually becomes even more futuristic when you accelerate compared to maybe the more calm sound that you're getting at low speeds. Of course, the speed is addictive. You can see the car really takes off. And that's the nature of electric cars. You have this instant power, instant torque, which makes daily driving and of course, scenic driving a lot more fun. But of course, you might be wondering, is this still a Mini? Does it still have that go-car feeling? Well, let's find out. Let me switch over into the go-car mode. And just like in the Mini Countryman, you're getting a completely different car right now because everything stiffens up. You're getting a little bit more feedback in the steering. The suspension is a little bit harsher, a little bit stiffer. The braking is a little bit more aggressive and the overall car just feels a little bit more composed. And of course, you're getting a different sound once again. And this might be my favorite sound and here is why. It just sounds cool.
So of course, navigating through these corners on these curvy bands, it gives me a chance to see if that go-kart feeling is still there. And that's not an easy thing to convey because it is completely different in this car. Even though that go-kart feeling is still present, I would say it's different than what you've experienced in the past with mini products and especially on the ice side. Replicating the go-kart feeling electric car, it's not an easy task, mostly because of that instant torque, instant power delivery, which makes things a little bit more complicated at the front end as the car bites the road. On the road, the new Mini Cooper feels livelier than ever. Honestly, it's extremely engaging with a well-balanced chassis that invites spirity driving. The steering is precise, though not overly firm, striking a good balance between sporty feedback and everyday comfort. As I floor the paddle, of course, I can feel a little bit of the torque steer, and that's the nature of the electric drivetrain. Now, of course, if you're in city traffic, the car manages to slide quickly into traffic gaps, which makes daily driving a breeze. Of course, it's the agile handling and the small size which makes this car fit really well in urban settings. As I go through these corners and bends, of course, it gives me the feeling that this might not be your true go-kart feeling, but it still has that hot hatch character. The car comes with you nicely around corners, bites well at the front. It has this positive front end, which allows you to have a lot of fun with the car. Of course, the Mini Cooper S offers a fun and engaging drive, and it will be extremely appealing to those who appreciate the classic Mini feel, but are also interested in transitioning to electric vehicles. Despite the car being quite heavy, it manages to hide its weight quite well. And of course, this 218 horsepower feel adequate for a car of this size. Now, of course, I have a feeling that the new Mini Cooper JCW Electric will include even more power. So that should be even more fun to drive. I've been feeling so small. Watch the clock ticking off the wall. But tonight I'm letting it go. Driving on those tight roads, of course, something that you experience in Europe quite a bit. You come to understand that this car, it's really meant mostly for the European market where small cars are still big sellers for all the brands. Of course, we don't know yet if Mini will bring the car to the US, so that's the caveat that I wanted to emphasize. We do know the production goes to Oxford in 2026, and that might give Mini the opportunity to homologate this car for the US market. But if you live in Europe, this is the car that will absolutely feel at home. So as I navigate through these nice curvy roads, I do get to appreciate the smaller size of the Cooper. When I drove the Mini Countryman Electric, I was impressed with its power and the driving experience overall. But once you get into a car of this size, then you truly come to appreciate the nimbleness of the car, the agility, and just the overall driving experience. Now let's test also the brake regeneration in the car. So right now I'm in the B mode, which is the one pedal feel. It's something that I do like in my electric cars. I'm using a similar mode in the i4 and in the iX, and it's exactly what you expect. It brakes on its own, it's quite aggressive actually, so I can see that it's regenerating some energy into the battery pack. Of course, especially when you hit traffic, you can anticipate that by simply lifting off and the car will slowly come to a stop. Now, let's assume that you don't want to go all sporty with the car. Of course, you can do this. You can go into the green mode. So this is the most efficient mode in the car. And this is the one that's going to give you probably the best range. And what's cool about this, as you can see right there, there is a flapping bird so if you're driving efficient, you will get that icon with the bird flapping its wings. But if you do this, then you get in the running cat. So essentially that tells you right there that you're consuming a lot more energy. Also in the efficient mode, as you can hear, there are no sounds. So it's a very calm and serene driving experience. So if you don't want to have those aggressive sounds in the go-kart mode or in the timeless mode, then of course you can choose this particular experience. 
naturally Mini does give you the option to completely turn off those electric sounds. Also what I noticed that the power delivery in the efficient mode it's a little bit more linear, it's not neck snapping and that's something that maybe your passenger will appreciate especially in stop and go traffic. Interior space as I drive the car it's actually quite comfortable. I have plenty of space at the front. The seat is not even moved all the way back. I can still recline it and move it back a little bit more if I have to. Of course that's going to come at the cost of the rear passenger not having enough legroom but it shows how spacious the car really is at the front. I do enjoy this fairly small steering wheel coming from BMW cars, which always have this massive and very, very beefy steering wheel. This is a nice departure. And of course, this is a way for Mini to stay true to their character. I've mentioned already the fact that there is no instrument cluster behind the steering wheel. So of course, that's going to alter the driving experience just a little bit because it takes time to get used to using the head-up display at all time to see the speed or even looking on the right side on the OLED screen. I wish Mini had a typical head-up display that can portray the information onto the windshield and that will make it a little bit more useful because your eyes don't have to always look downwards. The seats are actually snug enough, they hug me nicely, they provide decent lumbar support and also side support so I don't have a lot to complain about. I'm assuming that the JCW version will probably have even sportier seats but for the driving that I've been doing today they were quite quite good. Now let's talk about pricing. In Europe the 2024 Mini Cooper E starts at about 32,900 euros and if you opt for the SE version, you have to pay 36,900. Of course, if you opt also for the higher trim, that price will go up to almost 43,000 euros. Since I mentioned trims, Mini offers four different distinct trims on the Cooper models. That's the Essential, the Classic, the Favorite, and of course, the John Cooper Works. With each one of those trims, Mini is also narrowing down options in areas like color wheels and interior materials. The car that I'm riding today, it's the sunny side yellow color with 18 inch wheels and it has the classic trim. Oh yeah, so this Mini is really, really fun. As you can see, it dances on the road, really nice composure, braking, turning in. This makes it so fun to drive. But does it have the go-kart feeling that you expect from a Mini Cooper? In some ways it does. Of course, it retains a little bit of that go-kart feeling experience, but in many ways it doesn't because that's the nature of electric vehicles. Having that instant torque and instant power sent to the front wheels will change the driving character quite a bit. Of course, I expect the F66 Cooper eyes to behave more like a true Mini, but in some ways, I do applaud the Mini engineers for being able to still infuse a little bit of the Mini DNA into this electric version. Of course, the obvious question will come at some point. Should I buy the gasoline version of the new Cooper or should I buy the electric version? Well, in many ways, the cars are similar, right? You've seen the design. There are very, very few differences when it comes to that. So it really comes down to your personal preference. Are you looking to buy into the electric future of the brand? Then if so, this car will be a good choice. But if you want to have the last gasoline powered Mini Cooper, then the choice is obvious. You should go for the F66. So should you buy the Mini Cooper S? And that's a tricky question a little bit because if you have a larger family, of course, it becomes a little bit more challenging having this car as your primary vehicle. But if you do have another car, let's say an SUV or maybe a station wagon, a Touring, then this really becomes the ideal second car because one, you're getting electromobility, you're getting really good range, and you're getting a lot for the money because in the end, this is a fairly affordable Mini. Of course, it's gone up in price a little bit compared to the outgoing generation, but at the same time, you're also getting more range, more power, and the interior arguably looks a little bit more premium. This Mini Electric blends classiness with modern features. Overall, it's more than just a city car. It's a green hot hatch. It's fun to drive, it's stylish, and now more sustainable. Overall, it's a compelling choice for those looking to electrify their drive without sacrificing much of the Mini character. But is it a pure Mini? Probably not. But that's the struggle of putting the essence of Mini 
in an electric car. Yet, it's a good attempt and lots of fun.